<risa> bienvenidos, bienvenidos otra semana a las Friday Trainings de ITNIC. Uh, esto empieza ahora, ahora tenemos a Albertina aquí a punto de empezar con su charla. Deciros que estamos aquí todos los viernes para charlar de ingeniería, de diseño, de business, de marketing, que estáis todos muy bienvenidos, que os podéis registrar en nuestra página web, en itnic.net, en el apartado de eventos y que bueno, que estamos abiertos a todo tipo de recomendación, todo tipo de charlas, si tenéis ganas de también de participar, estáis más que bienvenidos, y bueno, que disfrutéis de la charla de Betina, que, que seguro que nos sorprenderá, porque es súper bueno. <risa> Pues antes de todo, muchas gracias, Xavi. Eh, pero voy a hablar en inglés, porque hay una amiga mía francesa que está aquí y el chat será más fácil en inglés. Ok. So, my name is Bettina, like I said. Um, I'm right now leading the marketing department with Kamalu. And today I'm talking about the life cycle of an organization. Um, I chose this to I, I came across this topic while writing my bachelor thesis. I studied business, uh, European business. And at the end of the course, I was interested in the internet and knowing a little bit more, so I wrote about growth um, factors and key effects of success of the expansion. But before um, being able to look at this, I had to analyze how does an organization evolve. And I think that's really interesting, and that's why I wanted to present it to you. Um, but before I start, I would like to know who you are. There's so many new faces. Maybe you could just go around, say our names, like, I don't know what we're doing. So it's a little more personal, and afterwards, while we discuss, when there's questions, we, I don't know, can relate better one to each other. So for me, it's be something like, hello, I'm Bettina, I'm here with Itnik, and I'm into marketing. You want to go? I'm Frances Gomez, and I am marketing advisor of Cameroon, and also I work in Itnik. I'm today, I'm a web developer, <laughs> and I'm interested in everything related to web enterprise. I'm Olga. Um, I work as a UX designer in a um, you know, startup, so this is promising to me. <laughs> I'm Victor and I'm a commerce manager. I hope I start to work at Cambridge <laughs> soon. <laughs> I am Sylvia and I am doing an internship in Cameroon in the department in marketing department. Hello, I'm Marta and I'm a Cameroon blogger. I am Carlos, I work in marketing in Cameroon. Hello, I'm Mercedes, and I'm working at the account and I'm visiting in Cameroon. Hello, I'm Christian, I'm working here at Indic as a web developer. I'm Emma, and I'm working marketing on Indic. Hello, my name is Tommy, and I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Fernand, I'm the CEO of Kamaloo. I'm Roger, and I am the CEO of Kamalais. And I'm the CEO of Yannick. I'm Yannick, and I'm working in marketing as well. And I'm Jordan, and I work at the Nikul. Uh, I'm Pedro, and uh, I'm Ines, I'm in as well. I do everything that's on the web. I'm David and I, and I work in an operations department. I'm Joan, I'm from Barcelona, and I like being related to marketing and school learning. I'm Charles, and I'm a Democrat team host. Okay. Also, there is a app who is himself, <laughs> and he is very kindly recording for this talk. So. Thank you very much. Well, welcome again. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I said, so most of you are in interaction with a startup, either you're working there or do you know an involving company. So that's why I think this could be interesting to you. We are, we see on day to day basis that there's changing going on, um, going on. Oh, there's always new people coming in. The, the organization is in constant evolution. So I decided to take a theoretical um, look at it, to look at it from a scientific point of view. And I choose the work of Plasen and Lipkin, who are two scientists, who developed a model of evolution um, of an organization, looking at it um, kind of from a biological point of view. But we'll get to that later. Oh, okay, before I forget, 
Um, as you see, English is not my native language, so you have, if you have problems with my accent, if I'm going too slow, if you have any questions, please interrupt me. I like this to be mm, as interactive as possible. Okay, so let's get started. Mm. Grow goal. Growth, I think, is the main key, the main goal for any any company, and that's uh, that's the biggest challenge. Um, an organization that has just started, it doesn't grow, it's not going anywhere. So today, though, we're not talking about growth. Where the underlying assumption of all of this is that growth is possible. So we're not um, we're looking at an innovative, or we're assuming that we're talking about in a, about an innovative and market focused business model that's creating value. So the question tonight is not whether growth is possible, but rather how it evolves. So this is the premises of all that's coming, because it's sometimes a little bit theoretic. Okay. I like to look at an organization just like a being. It evolves, no? There are different phases. It starts from birth, goes to development and flourishment, and eventually it transforms into something or it dies. And, um, as I said, the scientists I named earlier, Glass and Liefgut, they came up with, the, uh, with a similar system and they call it the four phases of an organizational evolution. It goes like this. It goes from pioneering to differentiating, integrating and associating. And this is what they see a li the life cycle of any organization. It doesn't matter if it has 100 employees or just two. That's what a, a company goes through. And in order to go from one phase to another, there are crises, there are challenges, there's a lot of work to do, and that's what we're going to see tonight. It's, it doesn't run smoothly, but rather, um, the, rather there's always a crisis that needs a new solution, so we have to adapt constantly. And um, this transformation, it affects the company as a whole. Um, I'd like to start with the pioneering. At the beginning of, uh, of any organization, there's an idea. There's a vision of an entrepreneur, when the, com the company is founded. Um, instead of founder, they say pioneer in this case. And I think that at this stage, at this moment, the organization is mainly influenced by this pioneer. But it's one person, his creativity, his vision, his personality, his leadership style. It's autocratic. Mm. So what's going on at this stage? Well, mainly there are no formalized rules. There are no values that are written out. Everything is passed on, is learned from one situation to another, and is passed on from one employee to another by word of mouth. So it's a very informal environment. There's direct communication. There's everybody's on the same level. The knowledge about the customer is very intuitive. We think, okay, this could be, it could be like that, could be like this. So there's a lot of guessing going on. Decisions are taken with the guy. Uh, and most importantly, maybe the organization is built around people. So um, the work is not task focused, but rather people focused. We have this person with this interest and with this skills, so he can do this. This is the way this is all built around. And this makes it, it makes the whole organization very adaptable. This is a quote I found from Prahala. He's a professor at Howard, and he said, he said about a pioneer, if this pioneer cannot imagine the future, he cannot create it. And I think that's um, what sums up this stage. Because all the whole organization, no matter how big it is, it depends from, on, from one person. And the main focus is on his version of where we're going to, not the situation right now, but the future. Um, and it's the pioneer who lets all other members take part in this vision. And that's why I think this stage of pioneering is best described as a big family. You'll see there will be a lot of nature features. <laughs> Okay, so all this, um, but we're at this stage, in order to, to go forward, um, I know, this uh, can, cannot always continue like this. We reach a point where there's a crisis, where there are some obstacles, okay? And the first symptoms of this crisis is um, that the environment becomes too fast. It's too fast changing. The pioneer and his team, he can't keep the pace. This could be, for example, technological changes in the IT environment. This could be customer preferences that change that are really un unpredictable, or a new market um, competitor, uh, a new yeah, a new competitor that enters the market. So anything that's simply too fast, the organization can't keep up. Another problem, another symptom um, that we need change is that there's very fast organic growth within the organization and with unknown customers. 
So when before it was possible to establish a close personal relationship with the customers, now it's, it's all, it's just gone too huge. We can't, we don't have any direct feedback anymore. And last but not least, new hires that don't match the leadership style of the, of the um, first pioneer of the first team. There's simply now new people entering the organization and it's losing its equilibrium. This is uh, here's the first symptoms of the crisis. Now, in order to go forward, the organization has to cope up with this, it has to deal with it, and it has to, uh, I don't know, to find in order, fight in order to solve these problems. See? I assume that this crisis is an unavoidable step towards the next step. I think so. I think you always have to, in order to, to transform, and, and, and that the, in order that the, in order for the organization to have a new behavior and a, a new structure, it needs to go through a crisis. If not, it continues the same way, and it's, I don't know, kind of spreading out and losing the focus because the problems are left on the side, but they're not dealt with. So not having a crisis is bad. Yeah, I think not having a crisis means you're staying still. Okay. I'm happy. <laughs> 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 so, but this is only the first crisis, Jordi. There are more. So here we see. I think this picture describes this state very well. So we're in, in problems, we, we're having difficulties. There's something new growing in the organization, and it's a problem. This is a, some tree disease, I don't know anything about it, but I just thought it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it fit well. No, there's kind of like an intruder. There's crisis, there are problems, but it will eventually turn into something, something good. No, I, I don't know, it's kind of beautiful, this disease. But it has to be overmounted. Once the first steps are taken, there's more crisis to it on the way to the new development stage. The most uh, visible thing is decreasing profits. At one point, the growth curve, no, in the beginning, the growth curve is very steep. The, the pre-estimate, the pre all the budgets are met, everybody's really happy, but eventually there's a point where the growth is not as, as steep anymore, where it slows down. And then this come, normally this comes like a big surprise, it's a shock, it creates a huge turmoil within the whole organization. And then, all this turmoil within everything, so that the, the employees, they stop trusting the intuition of the pioneer. They start questioning or doubting him. They ask, um, can he really be always right, this person, no? And um, then there's conflict within the communication, with the leadership style, and simply people start doubting, no? Um, communication problems could be that not everybody knows everything, there's, there's lack of communication at one end, or transparency, no, there's not a complete transparency anymore, like before. And um, some people, and this decreases the motivation of all employees, some people might feel left out because not all the decisions are taken toge together, and um, in the end, the team members, they start following the pioneer blindly. They start asking questions, they start wondering. And this is when the organization really loses its strength and its flexibility. And I think exactly here is the point where we have to move on from the pioneer to the differentiating state. I think that this is a key point. Mm. And mm. how do we do this? Well, I think uh, this is a point of discussion, okay? I personally think the best way to do it, or for me, is scientific management. Do you know anything about Taylorism? Uh, okay, what? Uh, Frederick Winslow Taylor, in the beginning of the 1900s, um, he started to, um, he wanted to improve the economic efficiency. He was working in a production plant, and he wanted to improve the productivity of his people. He said, okay, there has to be a way to do it. What he did, he started analyzing the workflow. He said, okay, we have to work like this, like Henry Ford did with the uh, construction line. Okay, so you do one part, another person does this part. No, that's what he was thinking about. And his approach that is still used today in management and industrial engineering are basically analysis, sympathy, rationality, logic, efficiency. These are the key points he said. And he also mentioned standardizations of best practices. So this means once you have found a good solution, Try to formalize it, try to standardize it, standardize it, and apply it to different situations. Okay, use the knowledge you gain. I think that's the best way to move from pioneering to differentiating. And what is this next stage? Well, 
it's uh, kind of like the antithesis to pioneering, because everything is different. Now, instead of order, no, uh, instead of chaos, we have order. We are looking at planning instead of improvisation. We have formal relationship where there, before there were informal ones. We need rationalism instead of the intuition we used before to take decisions. Um, the, um, so slowly mass production starts to take place, mass production, mass marketing, instead of one marketing for one person, instead of creating um, products based on the customer needs, now we, we are doing mass production. Um, when before we, um, we applied our rules from one situation to another, now there's a, um, a principle, a systematic and principle system being created, so you say, okay, systematically we want to do it like that, we want to be uniform. That's what's going on in differentiating. Now the task is the main focus. Just a question. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about like the triggers that could take you from moving from a pioneering style organization to a differentiating organization, you talked about decreasing profits. Yes. Um, but what about a company that's doing good? Like, does a company that's doing good just stay in that first phase and never mm -hmm. move past it? Or what other triggers are there that okay. could take you to move up to the next I phase? Think, right? I think it's not necessary like that. It's, it's not necessary that there's a decreasing profit. But I meant it's a, cis of a, a symptom of crisis. Okay. Right. When you detect decreasing profit, your, your growth, your, simply your growth is slowing down. You see, okay, we're, we're slowly entering a crisis. There's something we have to do, something we have to change. But there's a crisis that can also be caused from explosive growth also, right? Um, yeah. How, how would that work? I think it's, it's the same. I think this, this, um, this life cycle is high. I don't want to say intrinsic, but it's some, something, it's like a principle. It's uh, the way on every organism goes through, even we human beings, no? Um, and it can be at a very fast pace or a rather slow pace. And if it's really explosive, then maybe you're not going through a decreasing profit, but you might have other prices. Those are just some examples. I thought so, they're. So you're saying that this is more like a response to a collective crisis, regardless of what that what that crisis is. Yeah, I, I just uh, um, picked up this three because I think they're the most common. A conflicts in communication, um, decreasing profits, or really conflict with new hires, with new, new people entering uh, already existing ecosystem. I thought these are the three hmm, most common problems, really. That's why I picked them, but it's exhaustive, huh? There are a lot of reasons. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just, just ask. Right? Anybody who has a question, simply ask. Okay. <laughs> but you said that tailoring or standardization hmm. is, uh, is the method to solve this, this crisis? Or what? No. What do you mean exactly? What I mean is, it's the way to move. We can go back. Um, no, I mean, it's, a, it's a okay. um, I think it's the way to move from the pioneering stage, from the case, from a very unformal group of people who are working together without any structure. I think scientific management of Taylorism, applying standardization and rules, is the way to move from this phase to the next. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's necessary. No, well, uh, yeah, I do think it's necessary. I mean, it's necessary to go to the next step. Yeah. If you don't want to go to the next step, and just like, oh, well, that's a family, family business, and we're not going to take a new consumer. It doesn't have anything to do with the family business. It's just saying to, to bring some order in the organization. Okay, you see, okay, um, we have this problem A, and I, we solved it with this, I don't know, with this solution, no? With it. And, okay, then you have the next problem B, and you look at it, okay, how did I solve problem A? Well, I used this. Hmm, thinking about it, analyzing it, using rationalism and analysis, you come to the conclusion that problem B needs the same, same way of solution. You standardize it, you create procedures. That's, this is Taylorism. Well, I mean, I don't know, because you're saying Taylorism is pure logic, whereas in my mind, Taylorism is classic management. Like, it's a lot more than pure logic, you know? Whereas you can look at, a, look at an organization like GitHub, maybe, that uses completely non standard internal. I don't know. Okay, it's not an example. I don't know if it's but, um, Anyways, that there's companies that, because of their environment or whatever, they use things that wouldn't be considered Taylorism or classic management, but still they are very driven in what you said of 
looking at patterns uh, and, and solving the problems. And so it's then they're like issues. So I think that's very important, but Taylorism is like a bigger thing that can, maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I have the wrong concept. I, 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 I said Taylorism. Um, because I think it's it's a very common. Everybody knows it. No, yeah. not everybody, but most people know Big Taylor. Not know his work and the influences it has on industry and, and cons consume today, not cons consumption today. Um, the keyword I put up was scientific management. Yeah. No, I, no. I think, you know, but I think terrorism is, a, is a, an example of scientific management. I'm sort of sure. I mean, nowadays, like, I'm sort of sure. 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 i i I don't know. I think in the basis, in the in the principle of all of this, it's all the same. It's about analysis. It's about it's about um, looking at your workflow. No, is this what I'm doing? Is this is efficient. Does this make sense? Can I improve it? I think that's the basis of scientific scientific management. And what Taylor added was kind of a protocol. Okay, you said this work. Let's do it again like that. And I think that's key. And for me, this is a way of moving forward. And then everybody. I don't know how you implemented it, it's different from every company, I don't know. Maybe GitHub has really co completely different I'm ecosystems, not, I don't know. Okay. Honestly, I lost track, yeah? I think we were talking about the differentiation phase, the different, differentiation phase, phase, how it's different from pioneering, how there's order and structure instead of intuition. I think that's what we were talking about. Okay, so let's just move in this direction. So this is um, the differentiation phase where we're creating procedures, okay? There's mechanization, automation, all of this going on, formalization. The processes are invented and implemented throughout the whole organization. Um, and we're looking at it from a rational mindset. Um, the concept of homoeconomics comes in here. And we're creating standardized products, procedures. Uh, okay, yes. Then, just as before in the pioneer, so pioneer stage, there comes a moment where you encounter some problems, where not everything is going as smoothly as, as it was going before. And I think symptoms of the crisis here are inflexibility. The, the organism isn't as able to react as fastly as it was before because we have implemented formalization. We have a kind of bureaucracy. So it can be as flexible as it was before. There are coordination problems. It's not necessarily a big organization, but it's unknown. There's a new structure. The structure that has just been created, sometimes mm, it's difficult to coordinate. And there are problems of internal vertical communication. We have created a kind of hierarchy. So it becomes, it's simply slower that market information goes all the way up. It's simply, everything is just moving a little bit slower. Um, there are process problems. We have just created new procedures. Maybe the, inter the, the intersections don't match exactly. Maybe people don't feel responsible. They say, okay, okay, this is not my part of it, this is yours. So nothing is being done. Mm, the management normally starts to um, be, not be able to, uh, to trust people and control is in, or control system are implemented. This mm, decreases the motivation because people are co being controlled, I mean, super bad, they don't feel as free anymore. Mm, and the work is really specialized. We have, we have created procedures. So it's specialized, it's formalized. This creates demotivation. And maybe this might even lead to dysfunctional behavior, unethical behavior. If there are strong targets that are fixed, mm, maybe it is possible that unethical behavior uh, takes place in order to achieve targets at any cost, simply just to achieve them. There are rivalries between departments. And just, the, there's just some symptoms that I can show you, okay, right now we need to take some measures. This is, I don't know, kind of going on the hand. And this, and in this situation where there's rivalries, where the pro com communication problems, where the processes are not going as smoothly as they were planned to go, 
I think here, in order to move from the differ differentiation phase to the integration phase, we need entrepreneurship. We need all the employees to act as if they were their own entrepreneur. No? Everybody takes responsibility and initiative. Um, I think that's the best way. Of course, just as I said before, I'm sure there are tons of ways. I just think this is the, the way I think it's the best. Um, yes. Before we had pioneering with, with chaos, we, we create destruction differentiating. Differentiating is, for me, the antithesis to pioneering because all that was good, all that was creative and chaos, you're not, you're not, you're now structuring it. And when we are moving into integration, I think we have reached a synthesis where we use all the creativity and liberty that was there in pioneering, and we reuse the standardized, standardized procedures, the efficiency we have created in differentiation. We use it as a, a big synthesis to be really, really good at integrating in this space. I think this is the best, uh, I don't know, the optimized phase of, a, of an organization. That's where everything is going good. There's creativity, they, there's um, good communication, informal communication, direct communication, but there are also some, some rules, some, some standardization. Hmm. Okay, um, um, well, just like I said, this, uh, this phase is um, characterized as a synthesis. There's a horizontal orientation. We are focusing on workflow, not on the supervision that we were focusing on before. Um, on employees now, they thrive to fulfill within the, so they thrive to find fulfillment within their job. They're doing the best. They're, they're acting intelligently in the sense of the whole system because they know it, know it because the communication is good, because it's transparent. Goals, missions, values, everything is transparent. All, everybody is in, uh, I don't know, because it's going in one direction, basically. And here, for me, the, re um, the leader's goal is to give a helping hand upon request, to, to give proposal, to give support, to be there, simply. And, and this phase, for me, I see the organization as a living organism. Like this. You know, you deal with the tree with the mushrooms, it's working together in a symbiosis. It's a living organism with decentralized and autonomous teams. And these teams, they, were, they work with the correct allocation of information, so the person that needs to know something, knows it. They work, um, higher, they work highly autonomously, they are responsible, they're self-controlled and self-initiative. So we have, like a, like a federative state, no? It's a big, uh, big organism with little sub-departments that are working autonomously. Um, here at this stage, we have achieved everything. We have achieved um, one and like a third of, of the life of the organization, and we can move to the next phase rather smoothly. No, I don't think so. Uh, if you can move from pioneering, if you can move from pioneering to integrating without differentiating, I don't think so. Uh, I think there, in order, okay, mm, even if we were not looking at people but at, at like machines, they can't work together if there's not a protocol, if there's not a like a route given, no? Basically what you're doing differentiating, you say, okay, we're going from this place to this place, and we do it like that. And even if it's a machine, how can it know by itself which, which way to go, which way to go, and which way is the best way to go? So you think the bureaucracy is really necessary? It's not bureaucracy, it's just, I like the word standardization, formalization. Okay, um, put it to use all the knowledge that you have gained, okay? In, in, I don't know, maybe this is after a couple of months, maybe this is after a couple of years, but anyhow, you have gained a lot of knowledge. No? You know your processes, you know your people. And I think not using it, not using this information to create a system, it's, it's a waste. Because then, every time you have to reinvent the wheel, every time you have to ask yourself, okay, which is the best way to go? Best way to go? But if you have created a kind of system, a procedure, and then you don't have to waste the time on thinking about it because you already know. You, of course, you can put it into doubt and rethink about it. I'm not saying that, but. Why do you have to really differentiate? Why do you think? What is name? What is name? Yeah, 
Ja. Ich it's long. It is very long. Maybe you can just say it like that. This is the way I remember it. You're creating a difference from all the chaos. Okay. Everybody is in chaos, no? And by, by implementing some kind of rules, by some kind of, of protocol, you're making it different. You just turn the whole thing upside down. But it's a concept you can apply to the market. So how you position your product in the market. You are differentiating from your competitors. Or I think here it means you're differentiating from yourself. From the first, it's, yes. a, it's like the antithesis, okay? You're taking all you have before and pioneering, and, and you're making it different. That's how I see it. I think that a good example, typical of the yeah. Yeah, engineering it. style is not having departments. Hmm. A typical change would be dividing the organization, the whole chaos, into very different <laughs> departments. <laughs> That's a good example. So it doesn't have to be like a bad thing, a no. dif differentiating organization. No, just it just means a style that is more structured and hmm. defined than the other side. But I also think that there are good things on the other side. No, of course there are good things. But I think that um, you reach a point where you need a change, where you, where you need to enter a new phase in order to, to grow, in order to, to make the most of what you have. Mm -hmm. I think that's what this is about. Hmm. OK. Um, we should you ready? We reached the point where we have a living organism where everything is working in synthesis and, and, and I don't know, kind of like an equilibrium. And right now, we want to reach the last phase, which is associating. And this phase is reached so through border dissolution. <coughs> okay. We are uh, going through a shift of paradigm right now. When we before, we were looking at the value creation stream of only one organization. Now, in associating, we're looking at the whole supply chain and the value it creates. Okay, so instead of looking at a one company, we're looking at a lot of companies. In order to do this, borders have to vanish, border dissolution. Um, yes, we were linking our organization to a system so that it can proactive, proactively interact with, uh, with the environment, with other companies, and so on. Mm, okay, for an example. Uh, what we're, so the, com the company enters in contact with other companies, with the whole environment, and we are, you can see this, or we're creating trust-based relationship with other stakeholders. This could be your, your supplier, something like this, for example, okay? And there's a change, uh, shared exchange of interest, for example, profit sharing. And all of this is creating like a company biotopes. Uh, yeah, everybody's looking at Shama, no? For the <laughs> so all of this works kind of like the Japanese currency system, no? The different companies are linked together. He'll explain it way, more, way better and in a lot more detail than me. But this is the idea, to have a biotome, no? Not just looking at one company, but at the whole. How is everything working together? A big biotome. And I found this quote too, I thought it was really fitting. We have to not only focus on our competitors, but also on our collaborators and complementers to create one system. Okay. Um, at the point when the scientist I mentioned earlier, Glasgow, started his research, it was 1970s. At that point, this was kind of revolutionary. Nowadays, it's the most common thing to do, no? We all know crowdsourcing, and it's really normal to be in interaction with the environment and to look not only at one company, but at the whole system. But at the moment, and uh, these four phases were elaborated. This was new. It was kind of revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So in the end, at the, um, at the last stage of development, we have a living organization of value. So I think that it. Um, yes, we have Sorry. accomplished the whole life cycle. I think you didn't mention any like crisis symptoms between integrating and associating. Right? No. Why? Okay. Because I think that at this point we have reached. Um, all we can reach within the company. I think we have to re reach the perfect company, the perfect synthesis of the two first phases. In integrating. And in integrating, yeah, yeah. Okay. And moving from integrating to associating, it's just linking to your environment. I don't think, of course, it's like growing, it's just growing. Everything's no. good. I think once you are in integrating, you can grow freely. No, now you're okay. You have established 
oh, a good basis, now you can grow. And, but um, in order to go to associating, you have to get in contact with other companies. You have to create, no, you don't have to. I think it's, it's a good way to do it. No, I think it's good to create um, a biotope, uh, a, a kind of like a working group. No, this company knows this best, I know this best, okay, let's just do it together. So you're building a um, relationship with other, with other organizations. You're building, when I said shared profits, okay? You're, you're, you're building one, maybe creating value together and sharing profits, sharing other interests. You're just getting in contact with your stakeholders, with people around you in the environment. And um, why I didn't put symptoms of crisis? I don't think there are any symptoms. I don't think there's a point um, that tells you, I don't think there's uh, something that you'll see that tells you, okay, now you have to get in contact. Okay. Hmm. Um, another question about that phase. Um, I'm just curious, you know, yeah. because when, when you're like talking about the relationship between the individual and the group or hmm. the, the isolated state or the co collective state, um, there's an interesting conflict, which is what is really what what goal are we talking about? Because if it's if it's the individual's best interests, sometimes they will be aligned with the organization with, with the collective, and sometimes they won't be. Um, so I sociologically, sometimes it's your best in your best interest to act in your own um, isolated best interest, and sometimes it's best to collaborate, uh, whereas sometimes it's not. I think. All of this has like an underlying part of this that we're all going in the same direction. If there are individuals in the organization that are seeking no, different... No, but I'm talking about the individual as an individual organization okay, okay, in relation okay. to okay, okay. the um, other partners you could or could not have. Hmm. I think then I just have to change, to choose the... the um, okay, you're not going to form an association with your competitor. You're going to form it with a collaborator. Somebody right. who can complement you. So you have to find a way so um, that what you're doing is, is, is moving in the same, uh, correct direction with, for both of you, that you're not creating conflict. Yeah, but the question is really, is that next associating phase really what every company should do, or is it interesting for certain companies to do? I think it's, inter is it, I think it's interesting for every company. I, I, can't think on a, I can't think of an example right now where isolating is the best solution. I simply can't think of it. I don't mean isolating as an isolation, but like when you associate, you give up a certain level of autonomy and thus like a decision-making power, huh? No, this can, this can, this, if you look at it as a small scale, you can just say, you can just exp um, establish a good relationship with your supplier if you're making chairs. You can establish a really good relationship with your wood uh, provider, <laughs> um, and and getting an, a good. Um, so so we're not talking about consolidating companies anymore. No 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 no. I'm talking about staying in the same environment. About yeah, just just linking one company to next, and oh, it, yeah. it can just be a discount. No, okay. You say okay. I'm always gonna buy my wood from you, but you give me a case discount. It can, it can be like something small like that. Sure. You were going to say something, right? Yes? Oh, no, that um, you're comparing company organizations to biological organisms. Yeah. And biological organisms are never fixed. They're always going from equilibrium to non-equilibrium, and they have a tendency to look for equilibrium. So I think it's the same way the individual versus the collective. It's like a political thing which I think happens in organisms as well and in organizations. So nothing is fixed or mm. in one way. There are tendencies and impulses going different places. So, I mean, it's changed. We're always changing and I think organizations are the same. So it's just how you cope with this recurring crisis and mm. different movements. Yeah. How you can learn from models like this to be able to react to change. Exactly. But change is always happening. Mm. So within your organization and with other organizations. Yeah. Not. I don't understand how associate is a stage for a company. I mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think associate associating man, can be a, the very first stage for a company. I mean, we didn't, mm -hmm. have, we didn't even have structure. Okay, okay. We can look at it that way. We can say associating takes place everywhere. 
I put it on the last page because I think that um, the organization has to grow fully before getting into contact with others, okay? I think, um, of course, you can um, create associations and bonds at the pioneering stage. You have. You have, okay. Hmm. The bigger associations you need when you uh, become a performer and you are good in the market and you are... Well, if I start a small shop, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to ask to MRU to, to paint all his band with my company. But if I'm a buy or Amazon, maybe I can do it. Because it's good for them and it's good for me. But I need to have Amazon to propose these kind of things. Yeah, so but, but that's, yeah, that's the way to see it. But but for instance, if you're at the beginning, if you're in the beginning of your in the first stage of your company, and you have strength to, to build your own software, mm -hmm. and yes, but you might find a partner. I know, but this part is it's an association, uh, like a small association, like we uh, we share the cost of something, or maybe I can do this for you. It's yeah, like a, a local market or something like that. Enough. But this might be even more important in the beginning than in your thing. I mean, not say, but <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning, you really don't know what you are for. Or, or there are some startups that don't know what they are, what is your American, because you're, right. you are something new, so you need the other part, you need to say, okay, that's our American, that's our target of people to sell, or that's what we are doing. So we that's, are why, that's precisely why it's a shady. It's a very good, good thing to do this, this stage, because since you don't know what you will be in the future, is that uh, uh, counting uh, upon uh, partners who, who for doing this for you. Maybe in the future you will think that this uh, might be integrated into <laughs> 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 your, your company, <laughs> you <can> run the <laughs> chain. She's trying to say something great. I'm trying to give you um, a service because I think all of, of all of what you're saying is very true. Um, okay, I'd like to look at it this way. Um, these three phases differentiating and integrating is what you can do on your own. This is how you can grow intrinsically. Okay? And then there's a certain way where you don't have you can't adapt much more to change because you have a re um, reached the synthesis what I said, not of order, of, of chaos and creativity and destruction on the other side. So there really isn't much more you can do intrinsically. So this is when you go to look for partners. You you try to grow in another way in establishing connection with the environment. I think it's going on everywhere. All these spaces are mixed, of course. It's a, it's a living organism. It's, it's not um, it, it's nothing very linear. It, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. So it, yeah, of course there are phases, but, but they're, all into, they're all a little bit mixed. And in theory, you have to establish them clearly. But what's going on a day to day basis, of course, it's mixed. We're human beings. No, I think associating, just like you said, can and should happen everywhere. But maybe after um, after leaving the integration phase, that's where you focus most on associating. Because you said, okay, now I've grown as a whole. You're like an adult, no? Like a human being. Now you're an adult. You grow. You, you don't you don't grow any taller. But you can grow an environment around yourself. Maybe maybe like maybe you can look like a, this like a human being, no? In the beginning, the child doesn't understand much. It's just going on intuition. Inventing things, uh, differentiating the world seems a little clearer now. No? He's making up his hat. Where do I want to go in my life? When you reach, I don't know, 20, 25, it depends. Then you say, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I'm here. No? And you start interacting with the, with the environment. Create a family. Yeah, it was, it's a good metaphor, no? <laughs> Associating it's when it's merged to companies and then you have uh, to standardize okay. teams and the, the, the hmm. I hear what you're saying. I think when there's two companies merging, it all starts again. No? Yeah. That way we need new rules. That's why it was first and then you have to integrate the teams. But uh, I, don't, I don't know. Because at the end you have to organize people that is the most complex. 
Um, I don't think associating is only merging. It can be just a simple relationship. I don't know, they are children. No, we're, we're working uh, on establishing a good relationship with uh, their children so that they deliver our products correctly and they don't throw them away. I think that's a form of associating. We, we need to... At that point, you are talking about companies or people for those with the same object. At the end, the HL is a service. I think um, I, don't, I don't like to look at it in like a smaller scale, the environment of a company. No, all the other co all the other organizations it is in contact with, and for us, the HL is a, is a service provider. No, it, it delivers the common packages to the door of the customers. And in associating, we have to create a good relationship with them so we can trust them. And we have, a, um, in this case, we have a shared interest. We want our products to be delivered correctly, and the HL wants his name to be associated with the correct delivery. So we're going in the same direction. We are create, we are in the same environment, same like supply chain, no? But then you think it is that important uh, in stage, for instance, coming in it right now, uh, and the states it was in the beginning. I mean, yeah, the shame. And that's what we said before. No? I think it's all. I think it's always important. But I think a company can fully focus it on it, on associating once it is held, itself has grown completely. What if that was a human being? Not the example of us growing up. I don't know. It's it's a constant. It's a constant discussion. It's it's not all so linear, just as it is shown here. So the way you feel it is that uh, once, once you solve all your growing uh, problem, the only thing left is associating, is uh, trying to work on the ecosystem around your company, once, once everything is, is good in a new company? Uh, no, this is not growing, this is evolution, okay? It's, it's, it doesn't mean that you're growing inside, this, it just means that you're changing, that you're adapting. You can, you can grow, you can continue on growing intrinsically, but at one point, there's just not much more to do. You have to go to... Uh, yeah, I mean, at some point, the growth itself is still standardized, so, I mean, it's not all you should grow anymore, no? I don't understand. I mean, at some point, uh, you have, you're having a problem because you, you start growing and you have to react to this. But uh, after a while, you used to grow. I mean, uh, if you have uh, three or five uh, employees that come uh, in the company each week, well, at some point, you're going to have a pressure for that and have a way to integrate them. Mm -hmm. So the grow itself is not going to be this You see it's going to, to be more external to the, uh, the company. So that's, that's what you're, you're suggesting? Hmm. Not necessarily. It's not a so. No, yeah, yeah. I'm just considering my word, not before answering. Hmm. Not necessarily. You can, you can you, I mean, there's always two forms of growing. No? Growing from the inside, yourself, organically or grow it by, by interacting with another company, by creating a two, what, uh, from two company one. But this is not what associating is about. Associating is just about, about going into contact with your environment. It's a, like a change of paradigm. In the first three stages, we were always looking at one organization, not closely. We didn't think about if they were talking to other people. We are just looking at one. No? And now, you're taking this organization, and linking it to, them, to the environment. And yes, like Bernard said, said, you can do it before, but I just think that now, at this point, when, when the organization is complete, it's the, the main focus. Because there's nothing less to do, no? Growing, you can we'll continue growing, but in the stage of evolution, there's nothing more to do. Hmm. Have you said that this there is from 70? Yeah, 73. Maybe it's what it's wrong here. No. That's why I'm sorry to do that. You are the guy on the other. You say that because I think that you are the one who really categorize. You are the, the prototype of people who are categorizing. I mean, the difference is that you are qualified employees because at the end, the first time you do. do, do write the code, you have to write it. What afterwards you, you, you save it and you use in the future without the, without the necessity of having to type it again. And that's terrorizing, digital terrorizing. I mean, the only difference is that you are not using people to do that. You just type and save. But that's why I agree, I agree with you. 
the team and it's a very important poster. It is a question of complexity. As much complex as the situation, you have to do all that procedures that at the end, in the 19th century, it was with people, now it's with gold, but in the same concept. And the other phases is a question of complexity, because at the end, it's an equation that you are managing complexity and people. And as much people or as much complexity complex as the organizations, you have to move forward because crisis at the end is not bad. It's just the necessity of change something in an very unstable situation. And we assume that unstable is bad, but it's not. I think that the term is uh, people People thought that company uh, was the most important thing, evidently, but uh, just for selling things. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, we are we we think that companies are something that, or or at least in the beginning, we are associating and we are using media. Uh, maybe I'm an entrepreneur and I want to talk with uh, a business agent, for example. I'm associating since, since the beginning. See, si, yes. Yeah, that's what I said. And when they came up with this phase, it was something revolutionary. Uh, revolutionary. Now it's uh, yeah, it, it's normal. But nevertheless, it's recommendable. Not even though we already know that we're doing it, um, we can look at it in a more focused way. We say, okay, now we have to focus on this. Mm, this is a way we can improve ourselves even more. This is where we, the way we can evolve. That's what I think it's saying. Hmm. Do you have any questions on that? Is this cycle reversible? Reversible? No. Why do you want to reverse it? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to reverse it? I'm just asking because from the first two phases, maybe when you are in a crisis, maybe you can go back. Hmm. But maybe you can start by associating and then you can end up <laughs> integrating in order to differentiate yourself. What? And then you'll well, be, you you be an idiot if you imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try an example that doesn't simply doesn't make sense. You you don't you don't you are not born as an adult. No? If I don't I don't think how you can go backwards. Okay. Uh, you said in this you take money and you will start something new. I'm sorry? If you want to reverse the thing, you sell everything, you start something new. Okay, then it's not reversing. Because I think in integrating it's integrating you're using the potential, the, the creative potential of the vision of the pioneer and the formalization. I think that's what comes together in integrating. Okay. And then going going a step backward from that to differentiating to to creating rules, it just simply doesn't make sense because at that point you already have them. So I don't really understand your question. Do you have my like an example you're thinking of? You think only in, in a one way cycle, yeah. yeah. I was just asking for, for different solutions. Oh, for different as of, uh, if it's a cycle, then you have to start again. We have done all the all the transition. Ah, from so the, the, the problem so, is the image of the cycle. Huh? I should yeah, I so should eliminate this. How how yeah? Oh, but, okay. but I I, I disagree. Uh, maybe maybe it's a uh, uh, there is it's a, a constant. Uh, I think it's a constant evolution. That's yeah. why I think so it. So now mm -hmm. we have to explain how we're going to do the transition between yeah. associating, associating and by Okay, I don't think that there's a transition, I don't think, okay, okay, imagine like organization, okay, we have gone through this, we are associating, we are getting into contact with um, our environment, and then we have a new idea, we're building a new product, we're taking a new department, and then we have to start everything again. That's what I think, and that's why I put the cycle. I don't think that we have to transition, because we're not changing at the whole, but we're just adding something, and of course, adding something always creates a new, needs a new evolution. A new identity. Maybe acquisitions when, when, for example, Google acquires some company, mm -hmm. maybe start again the, the process. Google, yeah. do you think how to decide? <laughs> 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 oh, <they are>. <laughs> <laughs> it's an S for them. It's, like it's an S? Yeah, instead of being a full circle, it's like more S and it's super complex. <laughs> 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 I think that they really use it, but every time you make a circle, you make it much harder. 
Uh, you need three years to learn how to walk, but just amounts to know how to jump. It's because you, 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 every time you make a process, in every department or in, in a new product or something like this, you do it more fast because there are things that you yet you know and you don't need all the time to optimization things to make, to make the same the same way because you can optimize something that you don't start to do it. You, you need to do it back to then optimize it. Like I think that, that they, they really use their, their will all the, in all the products that I'm Maybe instead of a circle, it's kind of a square. You mm -hmm. do the same, but it's necessary to, to pass all the steps. And all the steps. So For association, I mean, when you buy another company, you move to a differentiating or integrating. Things. Like same situation coming again in a different context. It's different because, I mean, the uh, PM camera, is when it's a start, I see that it starts uh, some two or three people that have the same, the same objective. I mean, it's your own company, you, you have uh, an objective that all of them push towards the same direction. As much people get to the project, I mean, at the end they are employees, so the, 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 the focus is different. I mean, if you are, if you are a team of 12 people, everybody will push. If you are 200 people, uh, some of them will be focused on growing the companies, others will be focused just to keep their own place. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to have more complexity and you have to, to move towards the next step. Do you wish it just let me go on because we've been like... Oh, no, it's the end, eh? 15 minutes. <laughs> So like if, if if we are comparing all the time enterprises with uh, life and in life there is death, uh, how do you explain death in, in each phase or what, Well what I hope that only occurs after associating, but of course a company can die and be a I mean most a lot do. But uh, for example, do you do you think that a company could die uh, due, uh, because of excessive differentiating, for example, excessive bureaucracy or a problem with integration? What, what phases do you think that? I that think it could die in every phase, just in human life. I don't think there's any rule to it. Whenever uh, something I don't know is going wrong, you know, detecting that you have to change, that you have to, that you have to adapt. <laughs> so you get hit by the bus. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, in that sense, it's, it's a lot different in life because it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> when you're when you're young, your chance to die instantly are like quite uh, quite low. But for well, a company, it's quite the opposite. You start and your chance to die, and like uh, every every month, you're you're facing it's a different life. Just because of our medicine, no? Because our job nowadays, jobs are born in hospital, with jobs of medical care. If we were human beings, uh, not human beings, but if we were like a bee, maybe a bee has a high mortality rate, I don't know. But it, I think we don't die young because we do something, we prevent yeah. it. Like 100 or 200, 300 years ago, it was the opposite, no? The kids were on life expectancy for 30 years, maybe. And because kids have all the, all the parents and all the other social group around it, to keep their life. <laughs> and when you make a company, <laughs>
because I think it's very useful. I think it gives guidance. It, it tells you, or it lets you know, how, where are you right now? What have you achieved so far? And what's lying ahead of you? Okay? It's normal that I'm going through this crisis. It's, it makes sense, okay? I just have to do something to overcome it in order to go forward. I think that's what this shows us. How can we activate it, you say? Okay, and I think the key is simply taking conscience to, to keep our eyes open and, I don't know, to apply common sense, just as we do now. So, okay, you see, okay, this is a problem, and, and when you take uh, like a theorem, it's just a model, no? it's just an invention from two scientists. They may be wrong, I just like their model. And that's, um, but it, it helps you to, to look at things more in a more structured way, okay? To look at them from a more rational viewpoint. You have like a scheme and you apply your current situation to it and, and you can like overlap it. See, okay, this fits so more or less. And you can take action upon that knowing what what's coming next, maybe? Does that make sense? I think, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that two, two things that are uh, for day, uh, for, for each day, at least one thing is, it's wrong to have uh, to to look for the stability of the company because if the company if the company is is, uh, is like a is like a, <laughs> it's a it's like a, an animal like a it has life uh, never in, in life stability means death means uh, the finish. <laughs> and the other one is when you detect crisis, it's, kind of, it's an opportunity to, to, to move on, not, not a problem. When, when you are in, the, in your enterprise every time there is a crisis, you will panic. And never, we never celebrate it. We never celebrate crisis. And with this model, we should celebrate crisis. Yeah, that's what I learned today. <laughs> Yes. I have another question. <laughs> so, how far can you go uh, pioneering? How far? I mean, uh, this study says that you have to go from pioneering to differentiating, <laughs> and because there's going to be a crisis, that will be good news because the company is evolving, is evolving. But why not just stay there? I mean, maybe your company grows a lot and you're doing great, and that's all you want mm -hmm. to do. I think you have to move on because you can do the things much better. No, but what if you don't? Yeah, he's talking about like a news business. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's going to be a business. No, 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 not necessarily. I mean, there is a crisis. Because sure, you're slowly, it's like going well, but yeah, like but nothing is out of control. Like, chaos is good, and not management is good, and horizon is good. How far are Sometimes you're not aware of the crisis. Huh? Sometimes you're not aware of the crisis. Maybe there's not. Like, is it possible? It's impossible. What gate are you thinking? I don't think you're going to be able to do it. No. Really, this is what it has to make sense for you. Before we were talking about what we did, we went to the States. I didn't tell me that's the bad thing. What was the bad thing? It means that during the first two months, it was okay. But the third or the fourth month, I mean, it was not followable for you. It doesn't mean that it was well. Yeah, but it means that you have to change to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you, Joe. Okay, so you have any other questions? <laughs>